so good evening uh, i am guru priya primary research fellow in the department of civil engineering so today i'll be handling uh, the session for applied environmental microbiology course this will be the live practice session for the 10th week um, so now we'll just get started with the session so the week 10 course content had uh, focused on uh, two topics it was solid waste microbiology as well as uh, antimicrobial resistance so as uh, we do all weeks uh, we'll just go for about solving some questions uh, and then like we'll discuss about the concepts so here is the first question Voice is not audible. Let me check. Uh, is it audible now? Am I audible now? Okay, okay, so, okay, I was just telling that uh, this will be the 10th uh, live practice session for the Applied Environmental Microbiology course and this week's course content focuses on um, solid waste microbiology and antimicrobial resistance. Uh, so, we'll get started with the questions. I have displayed the first question, hope you are able to see it. You can try answering. Okay, as uh, Parul has rightly answered, the composition of waste generation uh, depends on demography. Uh, demography is the population dynamics basically, like what people live there or uh, the age of the people, the diversity, uh, all those factors come under demography. Uh, economy, based on the economy of the place uh, maybe of the people who live in there, of the income of the locality or of a state, whatever we consider. Economy also plays a role and generated waste depends on economy as well as the geography. Uh, because like maybe when we live in hill stations, uh, we may generate some type of waste. When we live in a plain, when we live in a desert, all this varies. So all of the above is the right answer composition of generation generated waste depends on demography economy and geography i hope that was a bit easier question okay this is a true or false question
okay false okay why do you think it's false maybe uh, because you know some other treatment technique right anaerobic digestion okay rightly mentioned um it is a false statement basically for the treatment of solid waste we just go for two options uh, in biological uh, treatment which is composting or we just go for anaerobic digestion many other treatment techniques may be used but uh, textbook wise the widely discussed things are about composting as well as anaerobic digestion because in composting you are not going to recover this uh, methane that is generated methane as you know is a biogas which can act as a biofuel also it has a good calorific value and properties but in the case of anaerobic digestion we intend uh, our intention is to perform the anaerobic digestion and to uh, capture methane for our purpose so you have answered it right great okay so now here is another question Okay, you think it's environmental stress cracking. Let's let's wait for a few more minutes. Okay, B. Any other answer?
okay so shall we go on about discussing <clears throat> what do you think is the use of a landfill liner If you feel like uh, typing is difficult, you can just unmute and also you can answer. No, not an issue. Okay. Uh, you just tell me what is the use of a landfill liner. Anyone else? Uh, anyone? Sorry. Okay, they are composite liners. Okay, the material, uh, yeah, geomembranes, clay liners we use. But what is the purpose of using a landfill liner? Okay, actually it's not completely to collect the leachate, maybe it's in some sense partially right and also it is not for the waste treatment. Okay, see in the landfill what we have, we have some kind of a hollow space in the ground where we are going to dump our waste, basically solid wastes. So as you told, leachate will be uh, generated from the waste. Because of many reasons, because of the inherent moisture content of the uh, water, inherent moisture content of the waste itself. For example, when you are having uh, organic waste, ideally it should not be there in a landfill. But if you have, for example, a fruit waste and all, they, it's going to have high moisture. Other wastes will also have some moisture in them. That uh, when you are going to make it stand in, a, in the same place for a longer time, all this moisture can ooze out from the uh, waste. So that we call as leachate the problem and also there may be rain there may be some kind of a water leak something may happen and there is class of uh, chances of water uh, being generated from the waste itself this water should not seep in in the nearby land okay if it's going to seep in in the nearby land it's going to contaminate the sand in that place it's going it's going to um, contaminate the groundwater level if it's so nearby okay again leachate is wastewater right because uh, with leachate also we go for something called a leachate treatment uh, we we cannot just like that uh, let out leachate into the environment because it will contaminate uh, air, land and water, all of this. In case of ground, uh, we can say that it will for sure affect the land quality as well as the nearby water quality like the ground water quality and all. Okay. Uh, in that case, do you think that the landfill liner should have high permeability? Our intention is to not let the leachate out. And to fulfill this purpose, we are using a landfill liner. First of all, we are digging one big hole kind of a thing. And above that, first thing that we will place will be the liner. So what do you think? Should it be highly permeable or it should have low permeability? Should I repeat what I told? Okay. I'll just explain this question in the slide. Okay. See, you have a land here. What you will do is you will you are going to dig out this part in the sense you are going to make a space like this. And uh, here 
what you will do you will dump in your waste so once your waste is dumped there will be some moisture content in this waste which is basically h2o so what happens is uh, or there may also be uh, precipitation or rainfall so because of all these reasons maybe some water will get accumulated here like from the waste some water will come down okay and that will be here let's say now when i'm going to construct my landfill i just put a hole and just drop in the waste what's going to happen is it's again normal ground normal soil so the water that is coming from this waste can seep out so here what you have you have the nearby land uh, you may also have ground water table all these things again your leachate is not just a purified water that is going to come from your waste because that is water that will have some components that are dissolved from the waste itself so now you have whatever the component may be you have something dissolved in that water for example it may be some organic content itself it may be heavy metals it may be some microorganisms uh, i mean microorganisms will not be dissolved but in case suspended in that water so all these things will be coming here and when all of it is going to be let outside either in the soil or in the ground water it's going to cause contamination on the other hand what i do is i just dig one hole i put in a liner here imagine i'm putting in some something like a rubber sheet like to be very lame but generally we use geosynthetic membranes or clay liners something like that okay so i am putting it here just to prevent the water that is coming from this waste should not go out just to hold it here i am just putting a liner here okay this is the case where I, when i use a liner and this is where when i don't use a liner now tell me which is bet um, which is best having a liner with a high permeability or with a low permeability both ways uh, maybe some water from the nearby land should not enter the compost and the water that is in the compost should uh, sorry landfill uh, should not enter the uh, nearby land so should it be high permeable highly permeable or low permeable okay i'll tell this for you uh, it should have lower permeability because th that is when we can collect the leachate as you have mentioned uh, when it's going when it's not going to be permeable uh, sorry i'm very sorry when it's going to be highly permeable all the water will seep in into the land so there is no point there is no leachate collection it's only going to be contamination but when uh, it is having low permeability only we can uh, use it as a good liner so here what i have asked is which is not desired so high permeability is not desired in a landfill liner but tear resistance is uh, it should not be like a paper where we put in some weight and it tears it should be able to hold withstand the entire uh, weight of the landfill and it should be tear resistant it should be impact resistant impact is kind of again a physical term where the forces and all should be acted upon and it should withstand all these forces puncture resistance is you cannot uh, always ensure that your waste does not contain any sharp objects so maybe they can cause puncture in the uh, liner that you are putting so it, that liner should be puncture resistant but as you have rightly mentioned environmental stress cracking should not happen it should be environmental stress cracking resistant
so here the missing word is resistant or resistant okay environmental stress cracking is uh, let's say the uh, pressure or the force is lesser only but since i'm putting that pressure for a longer period of time there may be chances of tear or puncture uh, in the membrane so even that should not happen this tear resistance and puncture resistance is happening at inst very instantaneously i'm putting in a very high force so that instantaneously it it gets damaged but in the case of environmental stress cracking what happens is uh, that pressure is or force is not very high such that this happens instantaneously but a mediocre pressure or force over a longer period of time damages the liner okay so it should be environmental stress cracking resistance in this case and i have clearly asked which of the following are not desired in a landfill liner so it's high permeability and environmental stress cracking both of them are the answer is it understandable or is it convincing please let me know if i have to repeat or if something is contradicting if you feel something is contradicting you can just unmute your mic and ask it's clear ma'am okay okay then uh, i'll just go to the next question we have b we have d okay Okay, I guess all of you are uh, much clear with the fact that households do generate solid wastes. So yeah, we do generate. Okay, no, it's B. Fine. Let's see what the answer is. Yeah, 
incineration centers um, is not a source of solid waste that's what both of you are telling right uh, like two people from the batch are telling and one people is one one person is telling that none of the above okay good uh, do you think why do you think incineration centers do not uh, generate any solid waste so when you are going to incinerate something what all do you get from there after incineration process Any idea? So we all know incineration is a thermal process. Mm. Okay, ash and gases. So, how do you account ash into? Aren't they a type of solid waste from the process itself? Like in many other cases, we can uh, turn the waste into some other products or something. Uh, ash is a solid. So, fly ash is again a solid and we may also get the remains, few solids. Uh, so this fly ash is again going to contain some highly resistant heavy metals or something like that. So that will again uh, be a solid waste from the incineration centers. Okay, Maybe we have technologies where we use fly ash to turn into some uh, construction material or other materials. But still the fly ash in that process is a solid waste produced by the incineration process. Okay, uh, Similarly in a wastewater treatment plant... Um, I guess no one answered about this. Do you think there is a waste generated or not? Okay, you have told none of the above. So that means you tell that there is waste generated, solid waste generated. What is the solid waste that is generated in a waste water treatment plant? Right. As you have rightly told, sludge is a because uh, the major content sludge may be watery, but what you do is um, you go for sedimentation or settling, right? When you are going to do settling, the water content uh, will be in such an amount that uh, such an amount that you go for dewatering it. Not something like you again go for a wastewater treatment or something. So sludge treatment is also known as a biosolids treatment in some cases. Uh, so not in all cases it is a solid, completely solid waste. Uh, similarly, in some cases they, they are solid wastes. Okay. So keeping that in mind, wastewater treatment plant also generates solid waste. So the answer for this question is none of the above. Okay. I hope you understand all the questions as well as the answers discussed. So now we'll go for the next question. Considering you have to go for different treatment options, how will you very broadly classify wastes? This is just based on the lecture that was there for this particular topic. Generally, there are multiple ways and multiple bases upon which you can uh, characterize. I'm just asking about based on uh, randomly to decide what to do with the waste. 
in a very broad sense. This was again discussed in the uh, lecture. Yeah, you're partially right. You're absolutely right. Based on toxicity levels also, we can classify the waste as hazardous waste and non-hazardous waste, basically. I completely agree with you, but here this is something narrowed down like to treatment characteristics treatment characteristics uh, i mean like biological treatment or a physical process or a chemical process something like that Okay, uh, since this is a very open-ended question, I'll just display the answers now, but you are partially right with this organic and inorganic thing. The first one is recyclable, the second one is organic, and the third one is recalcitrant. Uh, so generally, when we have this uh, waste collection, what we do is, uh, we all do this, right? Like we may segregate waste in our home before uh, disposing them off. So what we do, we collect all this plastic materials aside, glass materials aside, because we know that they are recyclable. Aluminum cans again are recyclable. Uh, means we can uh, just turn them down into some other product and use it again. Okay, okay, right. That's why I told you I'm partially right. So this recyclable, so nothing but we can use them again so there is no point in either throwing them out in a landfill that's just dumping them and uh, wasting their sources uh, and then organic waste organic waste again you should not dump them because uh, they have some uh, potential that can be exhausted out uh, like we can go for biological treatments or maybe like anaerobic treatment where we generate methane or something like a composting where we get a compost which we can use for farming or gardening etc the third category is the recalcitrant material as you told mostly this uh, recalcitrant material are very tough to handle they are not mostly non uh, degradable not even non biodegradable they are not non degradable like uh, when you when it has a lot of metals you can't degrade metals you just can recover metals from the wastes okay there are studies going on where when you have a high uh, for example we have a industrial wastes which has much of some uh, kind of a metal or some compound which is usually mined now what you can do is you can use this waste and recover that metal because you're not going to degrade the metal that is not possible so you can recover the metal and maybe again use it in the process provided that there is uh, technology there is like, economic feasibility there is uh, all uh, resources that is available in an affordable range for this um, 
purpose. So that is what we classify as recalcitrant material. Again, I would like to reiterate here that recalcitrant uh, here means difficult to treat because we cannot either degrade them or are they are very very difficult to degrade. Um, in the case of organic, we have one term called easily biodegradable where, whereas this uh, bio-recalcitrant. So the bio-recalcitrant term is very very commonly used in this field uh, but most often they are not used with the term bio-recalcitrant. We tend to tell them recalcitrant uh, because we know that we are talking in the context of a biological treatment. But keep in mind this recalcitrant not only um, is completely pertain to a biological treatment. They can, they can also be per, uh, pertaining to other treatment methods. Bio-recalcitrant, uh, what we mean is like some compound polymers like cellulose, hemicellulose, this is lignocellulosic biomass we have is again a solid waste. Uh, okay, uh, maybe when you cut a tree, they are going to be as a waste. They are lignocellulosic biomass. This lignin part is very, very, very uh, difficult to degrade or to proceed with whatever we have to perform. Uh, so mostly thermal treatments will be used. Nowadays, they are trying to develop biological methods for it. Those are called, those are specifically termed as bio-recalcitrant. Okay, uh, but in general, recalcitrant involves difficult to degrade by a physical, chemical or biological process, anything. For example, uh, you can remember it as uh, metals, heavy metals or some toxic metals or some trace metals, whatever it is, you can remember it as metals. I hope that was clear. So with that, I'll just, if you have any doubts you can, or if you want me to repeat, just put in the chat box. So for now, I'll just go for the next question. Okay, uh, cell emplacement method and trench method. You are absolutely right. Uh, so this question was placed in this presentation just to let you know about a uh, few other landfills also, land landfilling methods also. So yes, so you have cell emplacement, you have trench, uh, you have something called area method of landfilling and you have a canyon or a depression method. So these are generally discussed in textbooks, basically. Uh, Bioreactor landfills, uh, I am not very confident about what uh, they are. I, I guess they also exist because um, I guess these includes a proper methane recovery from the landfill. So that's why they are termed as a bioreactor landfill many many more types are also there these four i just included uh, because most common textbooks uh, just name these methods okay this was just to tell that those two are not on, on, not only methods for landfilling you have many different kinds of methods so here is the next question
I hope you remember the different phases uh, in, after composting, like what are the phases that happens with the waste. Methane, okay. Right, right. Okay, I would like to remem uh, remind you that I have asked for which of the following are not produced. So, maybe more than one option can be right. Now, I will give you some more time to think. Anyone else who wants to say either of these options? Or do you still think that hmm, as you have rightly said? I guess you get the explanation even before I telling. So obviously in aerobic phase methane is not produced that all of us know. That's why we go for methane is very exclusively associated with anaerobic process. That is kept aside. Carbon dioxide. So we know aerobic phase is there. So aerobic respiration is going to take place. Carbon dioxide will be evolved. Obviously water will also be evolved. But what do we do in the aerobic phase and what happens next to the aerobic phase? It goes to the acidic phase and eventually the anaerobic phase. So we are clearly uh, now know that uh, after aerobic phase, there is going to be an anaerobic phase, which means there is no uh, intrusion of oxygen inside the system. There is no influence of oxygen inside the system. Okay. So with that in mind, 
oxygen is not produced oxygen is not coming from outside also so this means that oxygen is only depleted oxygen is not produced in the process so in the aerobic phase the oxygen is utilized but not produced okay i i get i guess this is clear but you just overlook the options that's it so methane is also uh, not produced oxygen is also not produced and as you have rightly mentioned nitrogen also gets depleted but not produced so the same is the case with oxygen and nitrogen both of them are getting depleted but they are not getting produced so my question was which of the following is not produced so all three should be the answer for this question is that fine okay so whenever such questions are asked just be make sure that you read the question properly also read the options properly and uh, before you select one option you think why i should select this similarly when you are going to leave a certain option just make sure why you are leaving that you are leaving means you are thinking that answer is not appropriate for that question so you should have an explanation why you think that option is not appropriate then you can be very confident about answering questions okay so just have that in mind before you approach any kind of mcqs or other questions like this in future i'm sorry the question should be the ph reduction in the second phase of landfill stabilization is due to the production of ash so here i have just left okay i cannot be able to write in this mode it's the ph reduction in the second phase of landfill stabilization is due to the production of ash okay acids yeah um it's it's quite normal that acids should be produced that that's why it's going to be ph reduction so i did not even mention uh, the ph change if it's change you could have answered it's acid or base but i clearly mentioned the ph reduction in the second phase is of landfill stabilization is due to the production of ash so i also expect a specific answer multiple answers can be right for this question so just try answering whatever you think is a right answer think in terms of the process itself no it's not water why will water cause a reduction in ph what shavusta told was 
logically right. I just needed a specific answer for this. Yeah, that's what I told you. I missed adding reduction in the question and I read it in the beginning when I presented. Now I can't go to the edit mode and change it. It was just a typing error. Okay. Organic acids like acetic acid and lactic acid, etc. Okay, so you are right again. Uh, the specific answer that I was searching for was volatile fatty acids. I guess when we uh, talked about anaerobic process earlier also, uh, I told you there are four steps, right? Uh, I guess we discussed this earlier also. Uh, does anyone know the four steps in the anaerobic process? Okay, let me just go through the process once. So generally in anaerobic process, what happens is uh, there are four steps, which are hydrolysis, acidogenesis, acetogenesis, and methanogenesis. This is how methane production happens from a typical biomass using a anaerobic process. In hydrolysis, uh, as you would have guessed it by now, uh, we have carbohydrates, we have proteins, we have um, lipids, all of that in our waste because they are organic waste we have all this will be the composition of the waste typically so what happens is in the hydrolysis phase all these are broken down into carbohydrate monomers simple sugars amino acids uh, and fat, simple fats okay so this what happens with this is again they undergo acidogenesis where this volatile fatty acids are produced like propionate butrate and acetate these three are the major volatile fatty acids produced in any anaerobic system like acetate propionate and butyrate after that comes the acetogenesis phase where exclusively the ac acetic acid production happens and finally the um, methanogenesis happens where the methane production happens okay so in the case of landfill stabilization our second process will be anaerobic acidification so there also what happens is this uh, hydrolysis and uh, acidogenesis steps happen together as we have discussed and the, the exact term that we commonly use is the volatile fatty acids all uh, this are termed as volatile fatty acids So that's why I told you when you as, uh, answered as it's, it's right. But in this pertaining to this process, we term them as volatile fatty acids. Okay, so I'll display the next question.
okay so was the question understandable uh, is the question and the options clear Okay, so can any of you unmute and uh, like explain like wh why other options are not and why it's B because all of you have told it's B. Any of you can give a try. It's just we are just having a discussion. So any of you can give a try. If you feel that all everything is fine with this question, you can just go about giving an explanation. Okay, so this was something that I expected. See, this the, the intention to ha handle such live session is for live interaction. If not, you can just I can just mail you the questions or give in a Google form and uh, just you will just get to know the answers. That's not the purpose of this. It's just for interaction and it's not that like whatever I'm going to display here is going to be right most of this i take care that i prepare only the right things or in a very very properly um, managed set of question paper kind of a thing and give it to you but whenever you find something contradicting or otherwise you just have to come back to me in this case both the options you you should have given a thought it's not like you are choosing a more appropriate thing when i'm going to hard and fast give you some time uh, it's just like I give you some question paper and I ask only for submission. There is no room for clarification. You can just choose whichever fits the best. But in this case, you should have asked me why increase, uh, how, how to select only one option from this. Because both of them are right. Okay. Increase in pH happens. And for that, you have to be clear about the mechanism. All the two, three questions that we have solved previously, just depends on only one mechanism just the uh, principle of anaerobic digestion what happens in the process of anaerobic digestion and what happens in the process of uh, anaerobic degradation in composting when you are sure about what is the complete mechanism that is happening there what microbe is used there and all this is related to microbiology in a sense that all this is a result of the microbial action okay you have to be clear when you know what is happening there, you will know how that is happening, who is doing that, all these stuff. So just be clear with the conceptual understanding. Don't just like make sure that stage one, this will increase, this will reduce. No, that's not the case. All this is a combined action of a microbial consortium. So you have to know how sequentially this happens. So in this case, in, in order to explain what the answer is, the third stage is methanogenesis phase, as you all know. So in the methanogenesis phase, what happens is methane generation happens. So obviously there is going to be increase in the methane content. And uh, because of the microbial action, there will also be decrease in the carbon dioxide, a little decrease, not much, but there will be decrease in the CO2 composition. Uh, and also we can expect decrease in VFA because VFA uh, is co consumed okay because VFA is consumed from the system the pH is going to be increasing is that fine
your PFA is consumed and then only methane is produced. So increase in VFA is a wrong answer. Whereas when VFA acid is consumed, your pH is going to rise. So increase in pH is the right answer. And as a result of this VFA consumption, methane is going to be produced. And some amount of carbon dioxide that was produced previously will not be entirely there or it's not going to increase in concentration also. So there is no increase in CO2. First, methane only will be produced. Carbon dioxide may be produced in a methanogenesis process, but not at this stage. So increase in carbon dioxide is also a wrong answer for this question. If you have any doubts or questions, you can just post in the chat box. Here is your next question.
any more answers we have one person telling it's b Anyone else want to give a try? Just let me know if you are trying it so that I will wait or else I will proceed with explaining. Okay, I'll go with explaining. So in the acidic phase, BOD increases, COD increases because acids are produced into the system. Okay, so if acid is produced, um, that acid can be either biologically uh, consumed and degraded as well as chemically consumed and degraded. So the chemical oxygen demand or biological oxygen demand is the oxygen required to um, meet the complete uh, of destruction of the organic matter present in the sample. Okay, So that's what we have seen about BOD and COD in the previous um, sessions also. So when the leachate BOD also increases, COD also increases. As it is produced, obviously, you can either treat it biologically or chemically. So the oxygen demand for oxidizing that uh, product that is produced, either biochemically or chemically, is going to be increasing only there. Okay, so since that product, organic product is produced, the oxygen demand is going to increase in both the cases. So that's not the answer. And uh, CO2 concentration does not decrease, it increases actually because CO2 is uh, produced maybe. Uh, and the NH4 plus concentration increases in the system because ammonium ions are produced and this ions get dissolved and they exist in a state of NH4 plus. Nitrogen gets depleted kind of. As far as I remember, but this uh, NH4 plus ions concentration increases in the system during the acidic phase. So you have to consider about the gases that are produced, the products that are produced and the leachate that comes out of it. When you are going to have a leachate, obviously acids are also going to come along in that process. So here, for all the questions that we have seen so far, here, as this is just a screenshot from the lecture only. Here you can see it is uh, gas composition versus time, and here it is um, leachate. This the bottom part is about the leachate. So here one, two, three, four is aerobic phase, acidic phase, methanogenic phase, initial methanogenic phase, and stable methanogenic phase. So in the aerobic phase, what we can see is uh, the oxygen is being consumed, nitrogen is also consumed. It, it, goes down and um, ox uh, sorry carbon dioxide is being liberated similarly in the anaerobic phase you can see how how the trend changes so up to this it is aerobic you just have to worry about only three things here what you have you have uh, you have to see about hydrogen you can see from this graph that h2 is increasing you can see uh, carbon dioxide is increasing and uh, nitrogen is decreasing so since we have entered into the anaerobic there is no talk about this uh, oxygen similarly when you go to the instable uh, methanogenesis phase what happens um, you can see methane is getting generated from here only so until the acidic phase there is no talk about methane here but here we start talking about methane and it gradually increases 
and uh, a carbon dioxide is kind of decreasing okay and then what happens is nitrogen is now completely almost completely depleted and hydrogen is also depleted here the hydrogen is depleted because i hope you remember uh, even hydrogen can be consumed for methane production so as like volatile fatty acids are being converted to methane hydrogen is also used in the methane production process for reduction of carbon so in that case hydrogen is getting reduced in that phase uh, in the stabilization phase it's just that the waste is getting stabilized there is no more room for any process to occur uh, any degradation to occur so what happens is whatever methane has been produced is constantly saying there whatever carbon dioxide is produced is constantly saying there we know that our hydrogen is depleted oxygen is depleted and uh, nitrogen is depleted now so there is uh, that conclusion with us we just have to worry about what will happen with the carbon dioxide and methane it's neither uh, <coughs> obviously it will escape into the environment we have gas vents through which we make this escape and all but uh, speaking very theoretically in the stable methanogenesis phase there is um, in the ideal condition there is no change in the composition of methane and carbon dioxide okay uh, coming to the leachate portion you can see that the cod of and bod of the uh, leachate uh, which are these two lines okay this one and this one you can see the same trend they are just increasing um, at the end of uh, this acid phase they reach a peak and after that they gradually start decreasing in the methanogenic phase that is because the cod and bod is nothing but something that is uh, organic and consumable by the bacteria so it uh, by the microorganism and it get consumed and this COD and BOD is decreased okay on the other hand we have ammonium ions this dotted lines okay I mean lines with dots in between so what happens ammonium produces uh, the decrease after this initial methylogenic phase is very less you can see almost um, the slope of the line is very very uh, less and finally what happens um, using this carbon dioxide and soil air when you are going to uh, check the composition of ammonium ions they are going to come to a very lower level uh, similarly you can check the trend of chlorine what, what happens to chlorine and all this and heavy metals what are they going to do okay and uh, remember this bottom table pertains to leachate leachate concentration i hope it's clear i'll just move on to the next question this question i remember discussing with you in previous sessions so it's just a recap in um, microbiological point of view just differentiate aerobic respiration anaerobic respiration and fermentation you can tell many points for this question so I'm expecting you to answer. If you would like to unmute and answer, even that is welcome.
in terms of the chemistry of how this proceeds i was explaining you what's the key difference but you can tell me any difference there are many many points Also, let me know if you remember the difference. If not, uh, just uh, let me know if I have to explain it again. If you want me to explain, give explain in the chat box. Otherwise, give answers. Okay. I'll just wait for a couple of minutes. Okay, so shall I explain? I hope my audio is fine. Okay, so when we were discussing about the difference between three in our previous sessions, the difference that I was telling you was in anaerobic ex uh, respiration, the terminal electron acceptor is something. And the terminal electron acceptor makes a huge difference in these processes. In aerobic process, oxygen will be the terminal electron acceptor. And in anaerobic uh, respiration, what will be the terminal electron acceptor? Okay, I'll, I'll itself explain everything from the first. So as I told you, the key difference between um, in, in the biochemistry and metabolism of this process is uh, the terminal electron acceptor in aerobic respiration will be oxygen. In anaerobic respiration, it will be uh, something like a sulfate ion or other nitrogen containing ions. Depends on like uh, whether they are nitrogen oxidizers, reducers. So depending on different types of bacteria, they are going to be some inorganic compounds. Um, and in the case of fermentation, they will, there will be uh, organic uh, substances which will act as uh, terminal electron acceptors. Okay. So why this is very important is in our maybe in the first few weeks we have seen something called a uh, redox reaction tower okay in that we have seen how the uh, energy or how the electron uh, donation or accepting happens so in that uh, to for the cell to go till oxygen like if the process has to go till oxygen accepts the electron we are going to have high energy generation whereas uh, when it's going to be uh, anaerobic it is going to stop somewhere in the middle so there will be lesser uh, uh, energy involved and in the fermentation process it's, it's going to be even more lesser so with this you can see we have in the aerobic process, the electron acceptor is oxygen. Okay, so we have 32 ATP. ATP is again by which we calculate the energy. You can see 979.2 kilojoule per mole of glucose. Glucose acts as the carbon source here. Okay, so here you can see that 32 ATP is generated. Whereas in the case of anaerobic respiration, as I told you, CO2, sulfate, 
any molecule can be uh, an electron acceptor in the case of anaerobic respiration in that lesser um, atp is generated and you get lesser energy whereas in the case of fermentation um, you get 2 to 4 you can just go back to uh, the lecture where we discussed about glycolysis tca cycle all this respiration thing the redox tower all these things there you will get a clear idea of what i am talking about i am just giving you an overview this is just to uh, brush up and tell you that whatever you have learned in the first few weeks is the basic concepts and now we are going into the application part of it so you can just go back to the lecture videos or to the live session videos and even the live session videos have been uploaded in youtube you can search for my name uh, and then you will get those videos you can watch or you can use any book or resources just go and brush up all this uh, basics regarding metabolism okay this is the last question for today uh, with this we'll wind up the session And even if you have any doubts regarding this previous things also, you can just tell me, okay. The last question I just brushed up because you can go back and read that anytime. But if you want me to explain, you can just let me know. You can answer this question in any way. It can be A is right, B is right, both are right, both are wrong, whatever. Whatever you think is rational, you can just give me the answer. I'll just wait for few more responses and then let you know the answer. Okay, I'll just wait for one more minute. Read the options carefully. And if anyone wants to answer, you can answer. Okay, let me just put up the answer. Okay, there is some issue with this. Um, let me just give only the explanation for this question. And uh, I'll upload this uh, PPT after today's session and also the video. Okay, so uh, in the hydrolysis state, what generally happens is uh, there may be some facultative aerobes. Uh, what they do is they consume the dissolved oxygen in the system and make it completely oxygen deprived. Uh, okay, so uh, because some facultative aerobes may be present that statement is actually true the other statement on the other hand methanogenesis is usually happening due to archaea not bacteria i have mentioned methanogenic bacteria produces methane using acetic acid as well as hydrogen uh, acetic acid is used hydrogen is used yeah that's true but the problem with that statement is it is not methanogenic bacteria it is methanogenic archaea is that fine
okay so just remember that some facultative aerobes may be present in the initial stages of the some anaerobic processes just to because they can consume the dissolved oxygen that is available so after that is depleted they cannot no more serve they will turn into anaerobes because they are facultative they can survive in the anaerobic environment also so okay with that we will close today's session if you have any doubt you can post in the chat box or else uh, you can leave the session thank you for joining in thank you for your uh, patient listening as well as very good interaction it was good having a good interaction in today's session thank you all for joining in thank you ma हेलो मैम आई एम गुप्ता मैम आपसे थोड़ा हेल्प चाहिए था आई जस्ट वॉन्ट मी टू हेल्प एक्चुअली आई एम इंटरेस्टेड इन डूइंग पी एच डी मैम कैन यू जस्ट गाइड मी मैम फिर रिगार्डिंग द सेम यस मैम ओके मैम Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, can you just put your email ID in the chat box so uh, I can mail you, ma'am. Okay, okay. I just posted it. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Just a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. Uh, Pranav Bhingra, you can ask. Thank you, thank you so much, ma'am. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. I wanted to ask about like uh, I am a student of Iser, so I am also interested to know about some of my career opportunities related to them, and what are some scopes and some queries. So, you know, if I could know about this field, then maybe I could also connect with you on mail or something like that. Yes, sure, you can connect through mail. Okay, thank I you. I just have one more meeting scheduled after this, so that's why I'm just giving a mail ID rather than interacting with you now. Uh, maybe we can set up another Google Meet, or maybe we can have a conversation again, and then I'll explain you. No issues. Okay, thank you. Ah, uh, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining.